should be streaming, Emily, is it? It says it is. Okay. Okay, let's let's make it. Of the standards committee. The thing is being live streamed on the Devon and Sunset Fire Rescue Service YouTube channel. Just before we formally start the meeting, I'd like to remind you of a few things. If you're not speaking, please keep your microphone muted. If you do wish to speak, please indicate this by using either the hands up function or the chat function and wait until you are called to speak. If you are not using video, in other words, if you are dialing in, could you please say your name before starting to speak? If you are referring to a section of a report, it is helpful to mention the paragraph and page number so that all members can be on the same page as you literally. Uh, and finally, if you're not a member of the committee, then please keep your video turned off and your microphone muted unless you wish to speak and you're invited to speak by myself. Uh, if you do speak, then please indicate this as I've previously described above. So uh, thank you very much indeed, everybody, for being here. Uh, start off um, the item, uh, sorry, the agenda as printed with item one. Apologies for absence, please. Thank you, Mike. Chair, I am not aware of any apologies for absence. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just for the record, I'm looking in the room. I think we are still waiting for Councillor Bowne and I think that's and, and Councillor Brazil, I think, who are members. Oh, there we go. Julian's here now. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting held on the 8th of April 2019. Um, can I have a uh, proposal that these are correct? Happy to propose, Chair. Uh, Jonathan Dream. Thank you, John. Jonathan. Jeff Trail, second. Sorry, seconded by Jeff, was it? Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Proposed and seconded. Um, I will virtually sign them <laughs> next time I'm in the uh, in the building, of course. But uh, there we go. For the record, they are signed. Thank you. Um, item three, items requiring any uh, urgent attention. I am not aware of any items this afternoon. Thank you very much. And so we will move straight into uh, part one of the Ompin Committee, which is the uh, model member code of conduct and in particular our consultation response. So to give us a little bit of background information uh, before we start to get into the body of the report, uh, I'll invite Mike Pearson to just give us a little bit of a, a headline before we start to go into the detail. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Chair. Uh, aware that the LGA has produced a revised model code of conduct. Um, this was a specific recommendation from the Committee for Standards in Public Life, uh, whose report was published last year, the beginning of last year. Um, and the, the first recommendation there was that the LGA produced a revised code of conduct. Um, and I think the intention of that was that it, it went into some more detail than the, the previous LGA uh, model code, which was, which was quite um, slim in terms of what it covered. So the, the LGA's um, uh, code was, uh, draft code was published earlier this year. They've held a number of um, video conference webinars uh, on them. So um, hopefully some members would have had the opportunity to have um, sat in on those webinars. Uh, I did sit in on the webinar um, and there was an opportunity to use the questions function um, to type questions. Um, they weren't able to address uh, a lot of the questions that were that were raised yesterday on the webinar I was in, but I think the one I was in was the last of the three that they ran. Uh, so I don't know how the other webinars went. Um, and the LGA will now be using that together with the feedback from the consultation, which is what we're going to be discussing today, uh, to inform the uh, the final version of the model code. Um, I've not been given a, a time scale of when the um, the revised model code would be published, but hopefully it won't be too long. Closing date for the consultation 
is uh, is on Monday, um, Monday the 17th, so a week on Monday, <clears throat> and um, we will use members' input to the consultation response today to formalise the authorities' response. So this will be very much the authorities' response. Uh, this committee does have delegated authority to submit a consultation response on behalf of the authority. Um, so uh, it, the, um, we will we will formalise and finalise the consultation response based on the discussion today, Chair. So <clears throat> um, other than saying having looked at the model code um, and compared it to our existing code, um, uh, there, there was there's nothing in the model code that I think we would say our code was deficient in some ways. In fact, it's the opposite. I think our code covers some things that the model code doesn't cover. So there won't be any recommendations um, for significant changes to our code. Uh, but what we're suggesting is that we will schedule another meeting of a standards committee for later on in the year. The final code is published and we will use that to inform a discussion on whether or not we seek to make any changes to the authorities code of conduct so we're not proposing to get views on how our code should change today uh, the purpose of the meeting today is to discuss the authorities response to the LGA's consultation and what we think should be in the model code um, which won't be binding on the authority, but it's a useful opportunity to inform what um, what the uh, the LGA's model code looks like, um, because obviously I think that will form the basis of what most councils will be looking at in terms of their code. So, Chair, I'm very happy to answer any questions about that background and introduction, um, but if there are no questions, I think we can start looking at the um, the the consultation responses um, and take any questions on the draft code. Fine, no problem. Um, for members' benefit, I was able to, uh, on the webinar, um, probably, probably I think it was the first one that I sat in, which was very busy, uh, as you would imagine being the first one. Um, very interesting, a lot of questions, a lot of questions answered uh, in that first one, um, and a lot of questions regarding sanctions um, and obviously uh, sanctions, any sanctions that uh, the LGA kind of wish to include in their code would require a change in legislation. So the LGA are keen to hear from local authorities and from all members what their view is on sanctions, because that would require some lobbying for a change uh, in the uh, in the le primary legislation. Uh, there is a, there is a recommendation from the uh, Committee of uh, Standards on Public Life uh, that follows the sanctions. But we can talk about that more as we, we go along. There is also, uh, and probably not for now, but worth mentioning, because I think it will probably crop up a little bit later as we go through our consultation paper. Um, there is uh, one of the problems that currently exists across the country is all the different kinds of codes that are out um, and there is uh, a wish that if we can get a um, national code uh, again with all local authorities, uh, no matter what tier you are on, from uh, unitary county uh, down to district and parish, that would uh, that would be very helpful. There are a number of there have been a number of uh, situations across the country where members wearing two or three hats have kind of fallen between two codes, which has proved some difficulty. And the other big thing that I think that we do need to focus on this afternoon, and it is a big thing for the LGA, is social media. And um, when when is a councillor not a councillor? Um, I think, and this falls out of the uh, Ken Livingstone situation that I think probably most members will be aware of that uh, went to court. And therefore, if uh, there is there is a view from the LGA that if you're acting on social media, effectively, they are your views and you are representing your authority at all times. Uh, but again, that would require primary legislation because obviously there has been a, a previous case history uh, gone through the courts. So that's probably all from me at this stage. I'm 
think the best way of dealing with this is if we go through the report um, question by question or at least page by page. So I'm suggesting we jump straight to page 26 of the report. Um, and we'll just run through it on a page by page basis and see what questions come up there. And also, I would um, urge all members um, across all authorities to um, actually fill in this form online as well through the LGA. It is available for you to put your own personal views. So if out of this committee you have a very strong view that you feel hasn't been captured by the majority of the committee members here today, please don't think that that view is wasted or disappeared. I urge you to put that view forward directly to the LGA. This is where you have a unique opportunity to do that in as much as your view will not just disappear into the ether. There is a chance for it to go forward uh, as your own personal view. Uh, and, but as Mike said, that deadline closes on Monday. Uh, so, uh, Sam, do we have any questions at the moment? Any raised hands or not? Uh, Chair, I, I, I can't see any raised hands at the moment, but I need Steve to change the host over because he hasn't done it yet. OK. OK. Um, I'm just going to do that. Bear with me a second. Thank you. I'm not seeing anything on my screen at the moment. So, in which case, we'll move on to page 26, please. Um, do any members...